He approves of this radical approach. Knows it was necessary. Oh, okay. The rest of the city got cleaned up, but not the men they keep at the monument. And now the Union Socialists are practically running the place. Oh, socialists, huh? Well, it's your own damn fault. You, we, the coalition, Revachol, whoever you want to blame, never finished the job. Officially, the party never surrendered. Of course, they still all influence. The party. You don't even begin to truly understand the players of the table, let alone the specific circumstances surrounding them. What do you think? Thinking men have opinions on these things. Present one. Oh no. I have a thick aside. Gummies just don't understand how money works. That's how it should be. Soft socialists paving the way for the hardworking class to take over. Foreign powers cleaned up our mess and now they rule us. Shake your head in shame. This coalition seems quite capable actually. Nothing. I don't think. I just do. <laughs> yeah, that's the barbarian way. Eh, I'm gonna say this, I guess. I'm sorry it had to be them. After eight years of fighting those hyenas, boiling cats for food and drinking piss in the mountains, mm. I would have preferred if the right honorable King Guillaume returned to Revachal, or even if that damn clan Puisel had risen from the grave and led us. Sadly, that was not the case. Instead, all that is just, holy, and beautiful in the world was wiped away, and now it's neon signs with toothpaste ads everywhere. Okay. Foreign influence peddling garbage and stupid music on the radio. But this is just what the gummies wanted. This was their plan all along. This is what they wanted to replace the role of the suzerain with. Suzerain. Damn Frisell. He was the king we couldn't protect. The carabineers failed him. And the crown. He's hiding the hands of the high boy, in a very public exhibition. The high boy. A true king in both blood and mind, led Revachal before Frisell. He would have been better, but the damn commies drove him into exile. Some manner of self-deceit is present in his thinking. Sounds like this Guillaume abandoned him, and he doesn't want to admit it. Huh. The suzerain is the king. Has everyone forgotten already? Yeah. It's no use. Okay. Nice new skill point. You were still in Daddy's orders when it happened. When we took our last stand against the fifth and rode the cavalry straight into gunfire. Yeah, that's not gonna work. Thank you for your time. I have a skill point. Whoop whoop. Can I level oh I can level up multiple things. Hmm. I might go for physique. this boom yep okay let's run around looking at stuff then it looks okay or goes by an earthquake Okay, let's look have a look around here. Naked half naked gun. Half naked woman, sorry. What? Okay. 
Nothing really interesting. Okay, too bad. Who is this Hello, person? Sir. Oh. That front end. The store is open. Hello, sir. Uh, I am the law. Hi. Hello. Are you interested in a new and exciting book? What kind of store is this anyway? Well, it's a bookstore. It says so on the on the window. Well, not literally, but I mean, come on, context. Uh, is it okay if I ask some questions? Okay, sir. I'll try to answer any questions you have. I hope they're about books. <laughs> What's your name? My name is Annette, sir. My mum. Her name is Plaisance. She I didn't ask. Store. She's inside, minding the register or organizing the stock. Feel free to step in and browse our wares. I'm signaling that the store is open. Otherwise, people might not know. They'd miss out on the crime, romance, and biographies of famous people. Uh, okay. I should have a word with the store owner, maybe. Oh, no, no, sir. I'm happy to help Mum by luring in customers. Besides, I have some hot juice in my vacuum bottle to keep warm. It's a vacuum bottle. Should you be at school or something? I do my studies at home at the moment. I have to help mum keep this place running. What is school anyway? Mum says it's necessary to do both because it builds character. Mum says a proper worker is dutiful. That's how you get ahead in life. You succeed. Sure. Mum says it's peachy. She was a little afraid at first. There's talk about this house being cursed. Cursed. Cursed in the way that makes them say that no business is ever really thrived here, sir. That they Ooh. grow. Exactly. But we've been doing fine so far. Uh. Huh. Maybe they're talking about some kind of cartel, but sure. They shouldn't be, but they seem real. Anyhow, they say that these grounds are doomed for businesses. Of course, sir. Um... Uh... Well, who are these famous people? What is this crime business? What? Crime fiction is about murders oh, okay. or burglaries or things like that. And the work of a policeman or a private detective who's trying to solve a crime and catch the criminals. Why would anyone want to read about crime? Okay, I get it. Crime already gets the people going. Nice. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it's kind of like a puzzle too. You can guess who the criminal is or how the good guys are going to catch him. You don't look much like a policeman. Huh. Well, what does a cop look? Okay. Then maybe I'm not a policeman or sh should stop being one. <laughs> Didn't mean to offend, sir. Sorry, sir. It's just that you don't look like Dick Mullen. Ah. Okay, I used to be exactly like that Mullen guy. It's not your your body that's important in police work anyway. It's wow, look at the guy. I'm never hmm. Okay. Head, yes. No, your resilience. Sure. Not head, child. Heads. Heads. There are millions of different people out there and you have to get into their heads. Sometimes you gotta be the killer to catch the killer. Wow. Then. A total disregard for personal safety. You gotta take the pain. This melon guy looks like he'd run to his mom. Ain't got no mom. Okay. Isn't that very dangerous? Chameleonic skill. Unlike you, sir. He's just a fictional character. He's mm. no match for you. Nice. 
experience. Maybe you can show me some real police work, sir. Like in the book. Afraid of the curse, plus one. Uh, it's it's a white check, so I can retry it, but uh, it's never worked before. Just gonna say okay, bye. Okay, bye. Okay, bye. Uh, let's have a look around. See, gift books and molten candy. The display rack is brimming with worn paperbacks featuring an extreme muscular, sword-wielding barbarian on the cover. Nearly all the titles contain the word Hyamdal somewhere. Hyamdal. Rows and rows of Hyamdala men blur your vision. You make out some titles. Man from Hyamdal and the Mammoth Riders. Man from Hyamdal. Return to Hyamdal. Okay, I get it. Maybe a hundred. Man from Hyamdal. Yes, yes, okay. Those snow crabs are worse than they sound. Not even close. Man from Hyamdal in hell. Man from Hyamdal. Okay, I want to do and the a twinge at the noise of your makes you flinch. Your eye starts twitching. Your hand reaches toward a book with glossy cover art of the very muscular man from Hyamdal in, in chains kneeling in front of a staircase leading to a throne a woman sits on the throne leering at the man oh it's a femdom book nice between the throne and the Hyamdala man lies a bonfire casting shadows on the wall the shadow of the woman's headdress looks like a pair of devil horns oh. the title reads man from Hyamdal and the devil woman Interesting. The display rack before you is burdened under piles of Man from Hyamdal novels. Ah, I can't afford it. That's too bad. Maybe I will come back later when I have some money. Oh wait, I feel like the the Man of Hyamdal is kind of an erotica book. Now that I think about it. I'm gonna talk to the lady later. These shelves are overburdened with books from the same series. You see the name Dick Mullen over and over. Nice. Crime fiction is a disgrace. An asinine misrepresentation of the physical attributes of the arduous everyday work of actual police officers. These books greatly overstate the excitement of police work glossing over how long it takes to actually follow up on leads and eliminate dead ends. It's true. Furthermore, they have no idea how hard it is to simply remove a body from a tree. Also true. What's more, they completely ignore the psychological hardships of year after year coming into contact with people during the worst days of their lives. Not a single mention of all the stress this work creates upon the officer's family. Detective fiction just doesn't tell the truth at all. Now, would you like a list of all the books found on the shelf? Uh, no. Shelves filled to the brim with crime. I don't want a list of all the books, thanks. Tome of Fascist Magic. What? Is that uh, this world's the version of Harry Potter? Reads biographies of famous people browsing through all the books with all their names makes your head spin none of these seem important or relevant it's all just vapid egoism suddenly a particularly odd title catches your eye it reads high speed love the tragic true love story of jacob irv and alfie delatraz by one cecilia averbrook high speed love Chronicles the romance between two of the okay. finest tip-top tournay races in history. One of them is the madcap driver, Jacob Irv. His blonde mane graces the cover. Great. Next to Irv's life story, you see a slim biography of an occidental rock star called The Anti-Star. He's famous for shooting morphine into one of his eyeballs and cocaine 
into the other. How the fuck? Okay, why? Next to that, we have a Sholian radio personality, Guillaume Bevy, stands in front of a rundown drug den. He's a permanent fixture on Channel 8, reporting on real life crime and ruining cops' days. Ugh, so someone to hate. I really must insist you buy one of the books. Reading them is not for free. Do still browse, though, but not too long. Yes. I'm sorry, I did not mean to rush you. You are browsing. Go ahead. Take your time. Time is commerce. Time is the only thing we cannot get back. This bookstore is not strictly about crime, romance, and biographies of famous people. There's also a wide range of paranatural literature. Amidst the various books, you find one written by someone named Matthias W. Dundas. Matthias? About I didn't know you were a writer. Balance. These three things are very important to the working class mind. The point of the book and many others on this shelf, is to give people medicinal advice in situations where they don't have access to paid health services. Okay. It serves platitudes, while also telling everyone that traditional medicine, the kind people don't have access to, and which costs more than this book, is garbage, and would only give you cancer anyway, yeah. without even curing your cold or anything. Okay. Wholeness, unity, balance, on the other hand, can basically take care of anything. Though it is important to note, when it's up to your mind to heal yourself, then it's because of your mind that you're ill in the first place. It's your own fault if you're ill. Got it? Various paranatural books. Okay, wow. It's pretty, uh... Pretty interesting that this game goes so hard on. I don't know the most interesting things about fascists was their magic. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Hitler at Hogwarts was really fun to read. Several maps have been attached to a bulletin board hidden inside the alcove. They're held up by small pins. The board has come loose from one corner. The maps look old and faded. Your eye catches a map of Insulinda, a map of Revachov, and a map of Martinez. Ooh. Wait, uh, we are at Martinez. It's not really a map. It's a tourist thing. A picture postcard with buildings on it, drawn from an isometric perspective. Oh, uh, okay. In the upper right it's corner. A tourist says, map. 48. Yeah. Still, it's detailed. Could be pretty useful for scouting ahead. You see the jagged boxes of an industrial harbor, even the whirling in rags there. <laughs> this large map displays archipelagos. You see a constellation of small dots on the light blue emptiness of the Insulindic Ocean. The largest in the northeast is La Caillou. You are here. Uh. Another far away in the southwest, Seminese Islands, Lille de Fanton, Ozon, Laurentide, Fas Alamir. Archipelagos, North Arcade Islands, all with just specks of dust on the vastness of the Insulindic. On the edges of the map, the color fades into a blur of dotted lines, black and white, disintegrating into mathematics. Cool. In the northeast, a dust mite stands on the north coast of Caillou in a bookstore. It's you. Radiating outwards from you. The Suzerain Revachov, with a radius of 80 kilometers, still the crown jewel of this Isola would be barely visible. You can, on Caillou, Revachov, a single black star, on Ozon, Fondelier, and Vimandu, on Archipelagos, Croyan Moran, Villiers, on Seminine, Oldevai. And on Laurentide, Deora of the Seven Seas. 850 million people live on these little dots. An oceanic world of culture and commerce. 
torn apart by history. Cool. The ocean breaks apart into a tangle of cosines and azimuths, all pointing into pale nothingness. Windy is the north azimuth. Grant is the northeast azimuth. Samara is the east azimuth. Sail is the west azimuth. Isolas, they're called. Okay. Connections to other worlds. Words past the Incelindian, unknown to you. You only know you've never been there. You have little idea what they are. Distant stars, gods, but looking at them makes you feel almost non-existent. Whatever they are, the Isolas are immeasurably large compared to you and very, very far away. Very far away. So are they just <clears throat> other continents or? Perhaps they are gods, gods of distance and outer dust. The north coast of a verdant island is shattered by the delta of a river. It is the river Esperance. Countless bridges put the shards back together, connecting city blocks to river islands. La Delta says a great artificial heart in the center, teeming with life forms and construction. To the east, rolling hillsides, Le Jardin, Stella Marie, the suburbs of Saint Baptiste, swallowed up into the mega city. They sound rich to you. This is Rivershall East. Hudon, it's somewhere to live, not bad. Then there's Jamrock, it's bad. People shouldn't live there, but they do. Then Forberg, it's almost as bad and much larger. Then Coal City, it's the worst. Okay. So only Corona's okay to live in? Good, good, good. It's so small, you can't even see it on the map. No, wait, there it is, north of Jamrock, the strip of coast next to the Greater Rivershall Industrial Harbor. It looks downright despondent. It's almost Coal City, to be honest. <laughs> no, Coal City is worse, a charred limb. Rain falls on its slick black streets, and then there's the burnt out quarter in the heart of Jamrock. Is it cold in this bookstore? Or is it just you? Ew. No, this is somewhere to be. This is all you have, but it's still something. Streets and sodium lights, the sky, the world, you're still alive. I'm sorry, officer. The map of Martinez is the only one available. The other two are not for sale anymore. And besides, you could scarcely afford them. Wow. They're quite valuable, though they might not look it. The map of Martinez is 90 pence, though. That old thing? It's an out-of-date map of a tourist location that never was nor came to be. Okay. From when some design studio people tried to spruce the place up four or five years ago, they also renovated the horse statue, set up those coin-operated viewers, and designed the new street lamp. The place does not look like a successful tourist trap, does it? Nope. They didn't get that far, for some reason. A shame it. the project never got going. Would be nice if someone fixed Martinez up. All these ruins are bad for business. Yep. All right. I guess. Oh, I just save. I guess I can talk to to the lady now. Welcome to crime, romance, and biographies of famous people. My name is Plaisance. Be welcome, and please take responsibility for the energy you bring into this space. Uh, can you give me some money? I am the proudest owner of our little shop of culture. Annette, yes, my daughter. I hope she wasn't slacking off again with her nose in science fiction. Tell me, Boy. is she at her post doing her job like a proper girl? There's, n there's nothing wrong with science fiction. <clears throat> Wonderful. Did you talk to her? Yes. Great. On a scale of 
down to ten, how compelled were you to buy books after talking with her? Uh... Okay, I guess a, a ten. My precious, her dedication brings joy to my heart. If I mean, you have children, I just want to help out the kid. Turn out as great as Mayonette. Or maybe that's not the way to help. <laughs> I'm here to dismantle the free market. Yes, let's join the socialists. Uh, Annette is quite the trooper. She's a great value add. Okay, let's change the subject. The woman before you scans the store. Her shoulders rigid and tense. Every now and then. She nudges her glasses. Hurst? Who said that? Annette? I will have a word with her. This place is not cursed. It has a robustly magnetic energy. Good for commercial activity. My business is thriving, sir. That's what all capitalist pigs say. What in God's name is she talking about? Yeah. Goodness. You were already doing good, browsing the shelves. Why'd you stop? Don't you feel compelled? Go, go, get back there. The books await you. She smiles and nods, seemingly relieved. Now let's see what's behind the curtains. You see a set of tattered curtains Ooh. blocking the way to another. Now this room. is a secret. A strange cage-like trinket dangles from the curtains. Excuse me, officer. The back room is strictly for employees only. You see some kind of charm, an irregular polyhedron assembled from bones, sticks and straw. Inside, a disturbing fish head with empty eye sockets stares at you. Okay. This is a traditional Seminese ward, meant to provide protection against ill luck, bad dreams, curses, and other supernatural scourges. Ooh. Inhabitants of Ile de Fenton, the Seminine Islands down south, Aside from poking at it suspiciously, there is nothing else to do with the fish head charm at this time. The curtains remain shut before you. Nothing. Now please go back to browsing the books. Don't you feel compelled to look at the books? The books are all you care about. She speaks almost as if she's trying to put a spell on you, urging you to buy more books. <laughs> Oddly enough, the more she tries to draw you away from the curtains, the more alluring they become. Uh, I already want to open the curtains. Oh, fine. Just as you're about to pull apart the curtains, the petrified voice of the shop owner cries out once more. Sir, don't touch that. I told you it's off limits for the customers. Parapsychologically speaking, we're done if you decide to open them. I won't be held responsible for the consequences. It's too dangerous. What? It's just curtains. Wow. How is it dangerous? She looks away, mumbling. Why is everyone always messing with the curtains? Why can't they just buy books like normal people? Ma'am, I'm a police officer. I need to get in there. But I... Uh, uh, Calling for me, I must investigate beyond the threshold. I don't care, you can't stop me, I'll open them. <laughs> I'll think about it for a while. No, I'm a police Why? officer. It's not like anyone was killed there. I am sorry, I don't mean to be so impolite. Just please don't go there. I can't allow that. You'll only make things worse and unleash the powers. The powers? Ooh. Room for the employees, I told you. Now, please step away from the curtains. Wow, there's definitely something going on. 
Either that or it's a red herring.